Okay. What's that? Oh, you're taking pictures? No, video. Oh. That's your... This is my personal camera. Oh, okay. Gotcha. This image shows up a lot cleaner than this. Interesting. So I can sync the audio under this. All right. A lot of depth well, that's, oh, that's, that's fantastic. Cool. Um, yeah. I think if you had talked about breast cancer vaccines, um, people would generally say, that sounds like science fiction. That's what I would have said. Well, I was really <laughs> going to say that, but I decided not to. But since you did, um, you were not optimistic about breast cancer vaccines before. Yeah, you know, so many years were spent trying to tell people, yeah, vaccines will work, will work. But the science was not there to develop the appropriate vaccines. But things have changed. So why have things changed? We have developed you know, new techniques to identify proteins in tumor cells that are different between the normal cells and the tumor cells. This has now allowed us to develop vaccines against some of these unique proteins that are tumor specific. So let's talk about this. Um, obviously, I'm going to say I'm particularly excited about this vaccine trial as somebody who suffered uh, at one point with triple negative breast cancer. A lot of young women uh, deal with that type of breast cancer, African-American women. Uh, I know it's statistically a smaller percentage of women, but it's a particularly aggressive type of breast cancer, and you now think you may have a vaccine to deal with it. You're absolutely right. You know, triple negative breast cancers uh, occur in approximately 15 to 20 percent of all cases of breast cancer. So we're talking about more than 50,000 women in the United States every single year, just in the United States. So it is a significant problem. As you mentioned, it is a hard type of breast cancer to treat because we don't have any what we, of what we call targeted therapies. We can only use you know, surgery, radiation, and traditional chemotherapy. Explain to people why that is. So triple negative stands for what? Yeah, um, amazing name, huh? Because it stands <laughs> for lack of three of the targets that we typically use to treat breast cancer, the estrogen receptors, progesterone receptor, or HER2. So when the tumors lack those three proteins, we call them triple negative. Okay, and that's particularly difficult to treat because you don't have any of those things that the tumor expresses. Is that right? Yeah, we don't have the targeted therapies that directly try to kill the tumor based on the biological characteristics of the tumor. But this is what we're trying to change, and the funding that we have received from the 26.2 with Donna, you know, has really helped us uh, in this direction. So. Tell me specifically now what direction we're talking about with this vaccine. Yes. So over the last uh, year or so, we have spent quite a bit of time evaluating a, a protein that is called the folate receptor alpha protein. We studied it in a variety of tumor types here in the laboratory at Mayo, and we identified that in approximately 80% of all the cases of triple negative breast cancer, this protein was overexpressed. Mm, interesting. Then we tied this in with expertise from one of our uh, new recruits here at Mayo, who's an immunologist who we've been working with actually over the last several years, but we're very happy that he's moving his laboratory here to Mayo. So we're taking the science that we discovered right here at Mayo with the science that my colleague Kik Knudsen has developed to create the vaccine, putting the two stories together, and we'll have a clinical trial for patients. That is beyond exciting. So, so for people that, that aren't scientists, um, just give us an idea of how does, how does a vaccine in theory work? You know, the idea behind vaccines, which as you know, are very effective uh, to prevent infectious diseases, is that we wake up the immune system so that the immune system learns to target or kill the cells that express that abnormal protein or the cells that are infected by viruses or even bacteria. So, you would take this protein, and, and what would you do with it? So let me explain a little bit more. What we do is actually we will need to evaluate the tumor biopsies of patients to be certain that their tumors express this, this protein. So we do this under the laboratory. It doesn't take us that long to do that. And if their tumors specifically have this abnormality, then the patients will be eligible to receive this vaccine. And the way we do the vaccine is actually subcutaneously, and we do this vaccine once every month for six months. Okay. And the patients who will be eligible are those patients with resected 
or removed triple negative breast cancer whose tumors express this protein. The patients can be treated with the standard approaches, surgery, radiation, chemotherapy, and then they will enroll the clinical trial for us to determine whether this vaccine is better than the standard of care, which is nothing else after chemotherapy, to diminish the risk that the cancer will return. So this is only for women who have already been treated for triple negative breast cancer? That is right. Patients who have already had the standard treatments for triple negative breast cancer. So we want to go beyond the standard. Can we do something else to essentially wake up the immune system so that uh, the patient's own body fights any cancer cells that may be uh, remaining after the standard chemotherapy treatments. So if I'm a woman sitting at home that's just been diagnosed with triple negative breast cancer, I might think, well, why would I want to go through chemotherapy if I can just have this vaccine? Because, you know, this is part of a clinical study, and we want the patients to receive, the, at minimum, the standard of care. Mm -hmm. we, but in the future, I, I think it is feasible that we will be able to reduce the amount of chemotherapy that patients need, but that really will take several more years. First of all, I want to figure out, can we really activate the immune system to try to kill those cancer cells? Now, sometimes you hear people say, well, I don't know about getting a vaccine because what if that actually gives me the disease? Yeah, uh, very important point. Uh, this has been debated, you know, but the, the data related to vaccines are really very, very straightforward and solid, showing that we and other scientists are very, very careful with these studies. Uh, and for this particular situation, you know, we're actually targeting not the whole cancer cell, we're taking, we're targeting, a, a, excuse me, for this particular project, we're targeting a protein that is differentially expressed between the tumor and the cancer cells. And that is the beautiful thing about this. Because one of the ideas here, what are the differences between a tumor cell and a normal cell that then we can exploit to better uh, prevent the cancers from ret returning? So you're not injecting people with cancer? Oh, no way. No <laughs> way. We wouldn't do that. No. So, so you're, you're simply taking a protein, and that way people don't have to worry if I get this injection that's going to make me more likely to get cancer. Oh, not at all, not at all. Uh, so the exciting thing for me is, and I've always felt this way about clinical trials, is I know we don't know everything yet, yes. but, but what would you say to, to women, and I, I, I know a lot of women with triple negative breast cancer would, would jump at this opportunity, about being involved in a clinical trial, because it really is the cutting edge, isn't it? Oh, you, you're absolutely right. You know, all of the therapies that we have today were developed because of clinical trials that were done in the past. But we need to move beyond the best that we have today because I want more and more people to be cured if they are diagnosed with breast cancer. So, Edith, um, talk a little bit about triple negative breast cancer. Yes, because yes. I want people to understand that um, this is one of those subsets of breast cancer that we've already talked about that is difficult to treat. Um, what is the mortality rate with triple negative breast cancer compared to, say, an estrogen positive breast cancer? Yeah, so you know, as a way to answer this question, there are three main subtypes of breast cancer, hormone receptor positive, HER2 positive, and triple negative. Amongst those three main types, actually, there may be many more sub subtypes mm -hmm. based on differential expression of genes and proteins. So for patients with hormone receptor positive breast cancer, we can use antiestrogens to treat them, such as tamoxifen or other types of drugs that are all in tablet form. For patients with HER2-positive breast cancer, we have standard therapies plus trastuzumab that specifically targets the HER2. For triple negative, we're missing that targeted approach. And that's why doing this vaccine trial is so important because we're taking new knowledge based on science and applying it to one of the areas that are most interesting to all of us and to patients, which is what can we do to better understand the immune system so that we can help activate the immune system to have more effective therapies for cancer? So all of this, the idea behind all of this is to get an immune system that used to be blind to cancer to understand how to attack cancer. I tell you, sometimes I call you uh, Dr. Deegan because you said it perfectly <laughs> well. <laughs> I like that. I like that. I need my own lab coat. Okay. Um, so in the last... 10 years or so, Yes, you have personally developed a clinical trial that has changed the standard of care for people with HER2 breast cancer, which yes. has improved 
the survival odds dramatically. Yes. And now we have this. Yeah. You have to be over the moon. Tell you, it's all because of teamwork, Donna. Um, you know, it's great to be able to have ideas, to incorporate the ideas of the members of the team, and be able to work together towards this goal that we all have, which is number one, really, it's a complicated goal though. Can we decrease the risk of breast cancer development? This is very important to all of us, and that's why I believe so much in exercise and good nutrition overall. But number two, what can we do to help women or men who are diagnosed with breast cancer so we can imp improve their odds of survival? So, you know, I remain very excited. You know, every day I, I love what we do because I see the progress being made. And how does the marathon play into all that? I tell you, the marathon has been instrumental to all of this work that we have done over the years because we didn't have a genomics program here at Mayo Clinic uh, before the marathon started. So we used the funds to start the program. Over the years, we've used the money very, very carefully to identify biological changes in tumor cells that have now allowed us to develop new strategies for treatment. So I think, you know, one day at a time, you know, one step at a time, but I think we're going in the right direction. And I am super excited about uh, the event uh, in just a few weeks. Uh, we're getting ready, the team is getting ready, the support is really high, and uh, people should know that they should be proud, actually, to be part of all this process because they're helping themselves and also helping thousands of people who are concerned or are diagnosed with breast cancer. Well, I know it's important to me and I know it's important to you for people to know when they spend their money to come and run this race, that that money is really going to a powerful purpose. Uh, you are correct about this. You know, to me, there are so many important um, things to discuss about this because certainly a significant portion of the money is coming to this state-of-the-art, you know, futuristic but realistic uh, cancer research here in the laboratory or in the clinic. But I always remember that we're using 30% of the funds for the Donna Foundation to help underserved women so that they can meet the needs, so that they can get treatments today. So it's a combination of both deal with the situation or the problem today, but also think about the better future. Love it. Okay, so I'm almost done, but I, but I do want to get you to just just because I know th I know they want to hone in specifically on this on this uh, yes va vaccine yes so so women who are eligible for the vaccine are women who have finished chemotherapy within a year yes must they be cancer free ah uh, yes okay yes so the idea behind this uh, this protocol that we're developing to be activated at Mayo uh, sometime in 2015 is to enroll women who have already had surgery for triple negative breast cancer, women who have completed chemotherapy within a year, then they need to allow us to evaluate that tumor specimen for the presence of this folate receptor alpha protein. And then they could enroll into the clinical trial. And essentially we're gonna do uh, an analysis which, which we call prospective. So we give the vaccine, we follow women, and then we determine whether it is as efficacious as we hope it, it will be. And what if it is, Edith? What if, what if this vaccine is everything that you hope it will be? How does that change the landscape of breast cancer?